Hey, what's going on everybody? So I recently found out that the Stack Overflow developer survey results are out for 2020. And if you're not familiar with the Stack Overflow survey, this is a survey that Stack Overflow does once a year and they ask a wide audience of developers, you know, what are languages that they love? What are languages that they hate? What are languages that they're interested in? You know, they also ask like salaries and experience and, you know, education and all kinds of questions and background. Stack Overflow is not the only one that, that has a developer survey, but personally, I think they're probably the best one. I know HackerRank has one also, and I think GitHub does one. I'm sure there's probably other ones that I can't think of off the top of my head right now, like uh, State of JS is another one. And there, there's a few different, different surveys out there, but definitely this is a big one. And I geek out over it every year. I make sure to participate and take the survey. And I figured I was gonna look at the results anyways. So I might as well record it and bring you all along um, so we can kind of check it out together. You know, there's a lot of really good information on here. I remember when I first started learning, I would look on here and just, you know, um, be really interested in how many people were self-taught, how, how long the average developer has been working and the amount of experience that they have. There's just so much good stuff. So let's just go through it right now. Uh, we'll go through the overview. Let's see. All right, here are the key results. Let's go to the most loved language. Let's start off there. All right, most loved percent of developers who are developing with the language or technology and have expressed interest in continuing to develop with it. Rust. Rust is a, a big one, you know, um, it's been around for a little while now and I know it just keeps getting more and more popular and I, I hear a lot of people talking about it and I'm really, uh, I, I should check it out sometime. I should really uh, make an effort to try it out. So Rust was number one for the most loved. Number two is TypeScript. I work in TypeScript. I can, uh, I can say that I do love working in TypeScript. I do prefer it over JavaScript now. I couldn't see myself going back and I remember when I when I when I had to learn TypeScript because you know we were we were starting to use it at my old job and I, I wasn't too fond of it and now I just couldn't see myself not using it so I do like TypeScript quite a bit um, Python number three Kotlin I also used that at my first job Kotlin was uh, the first back-end uh, language that I worked in a real dev environment with. It's a super set of Java. Um, it's pretty cool. I, I like Kotlin. And then Go. Go came in at number five. And you can see there's other ones. I'm just probably going to do the top five. And if, if you want to come back and check it out yourself. So the most dreaded language. Let's see. So percent of developers who are developing with the language or technology but have not expressed interest in continuing to do so. All right, VBA is number 1 and I kind of feel uh kind of feel silly not knowing that uh what B what VBA is. Uh, okay, it's Visual Basic Applications. Okay, I feel all right, well, now I know what that is, and it sounds terrible. I probably wouldn't want to work in that either. I'm glad I don't know what that is. That just, that that looked like, uh, like, just, just everything about this, uh, this top results in Google just looks like something I don't want to deal with. Um, objective C is number two at 76% for most dreaded. Perl is number three. Assembly number four and C at number five there. So it's kind of funny, the further down you go, the more and more you just see everybody just hates every language that they're programming in and nobody really wants to work in what they're working in after a while, they get bored and want to try something new, right? Um, most wanted language. Percent of developers who are not developing with the language or technology but have expressed interest in developing with it. Python, 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 Python. Python is so popular. I, I recommend Python as a good first language. It's, it's. I, I always recommend Python and JavaScript. Those are the two first languages that I always recommend. I think they're easier to learn. I, I've, I've messed around a tiny bit with Python, but I'm a JavaScript guy, and you know that's, that's what I like. I like JavaScript, and I recommend it because it's just simple. TypeScript's here. Um, Go, Go's a very popular one right now too. Rust, Kotlin, there, there's some good ones up here in the, in the top five there. So those are, those are the most loved, dreaded, and wanted technologies. All right, most popular technologies. Let's see what we got here. Uh, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, SQL, Python, Java, dash, TypeScript, 
Uh huh. That's by all respondents. Let's see what the professionals had to say. It seems to be pretty consistent across both uh, professional and just all respondents there for the most popular technologies in JavaScript and HTML and CSS. Here you learn that and you're, you're pretty good to go. I always recommend just JavaScript and HTML and CSS is usually what I always recommend people, especially you're getting into web. You know, the internet just keeps growing and growing. Uh, the, the need for web developers just keeps getting bigger and bigger. I think it's the, the easiest way to get into development. I think it's the easiest path to learn um, programming is web. So, you know, that's just what I always recommend and I work in it. So of course I'm going to recommend it, right? Cause I can talk about it. So, all right, let's go to top pain technologies. What do we got here? Top pain technologies. What languages are associated with the highest salaries worldwide? So this is global. All right. Uh, top pain technologies. You have Perl at 76 K Scala at 76 K go at 74 K rust at 74k and ruby at 71k let's see those us numbers because i know the us numbers are always a lot bigger just you know because we're we're spoiled here and we make we make really good money in the us so scala wow look at that 150k there go programmers are are getting paid 140 objective c 130 kotlin ah kotlin's up there too huh maybe maybe i should start writing some kotlin again Perl at 130. Funny, Perl is one of the most uh, dreaded languages, but it's also, you know, one of the highest paying, at least according to the survey. So, so let's go back to the overview. Let's see what else. Um, what else do we have in the overview? Global salaries, right? We saw the highest paid technologies. Let's check out like global salaries and what developers are getting paid. Okay, so globally, I'm just probably going to do front end, back end and, and full stack. I don't think I'm going to do all these other ones. Front end developers globally on a global scale, 49 K, uh, back end developers, 53 K and then full stack developers, 54 K that's globally. Let's look at the U S numbers. So U S numbers, front end developer is 110 K and we're spoiled in the U S we, we really do very well here. Um, uh, let's see, backend developers make 120,000 in the U S and then full stack developers make 112. That's kind of funny, right? You got front end developers make 110 and backend developers make 120. But if you know both, you make 112. So why not just focus on backend, right? Or just focus on front end. I'm, I'm technically a full stack developer, but I, my focus is front end. So I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm not making this much yet, but given the amount of experience I have and that I'm self-taught, I'm well on my way to making that and I, I can't be any happier. Um, you know, I, I didn't have to acquire any, any school debt for it. And although maybe I didn't make as much when I first started, I'm, I'm catching up and in a few more years, I'll be making just as much as someone who graduated college because I'll have five years of experience, even though I didn't graduate college. It, it, it shouldn't make that big of a difference. It might make a small difference, but it shouldn't make that big of a difference. And that's, that's, that's pretty much it. I, you know, I can, I can really dive deep into this, but I don't know if I, if I want to do that, there's a lot of other stuff. There's so, so many questions and, and just so it go, it gets so detailed and so deep and, and they really just ask an abundant amount of questions. You know, and if you're interested, check it out. The results were just released a few days ago. I'll make sure to link it below. And if you participated in it this year, make sure to check out the results. We'll see how some of the, you know, things that you answered and some of the questions that you responded to, um, how they were different and how, how they affected the average and where you fell. I think I'm going to wrap it up now. I don't want to get super deep into this. I just kind of wanted to check out the overview and kind of show you all um, what, what the, the survey kind of covers and the questions that they ask and the cool information that you can get out of it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you're interested in watching more videos on how I taught myself how to code and became a self-taught programmer, make sure to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.